I got here a 2011 Dodge Grand Caravan. There's two codes. Let's see, I didn't diagnose anything yet. I just scanned it. And there's two codes in the engine computer. There is a PO60A, engine oil pressure control circuit, and a PO627, which is fuel pump control circuit open. So this code, fuel pump control circuit open. What happened was is these things, these tip them, the fuse box over here fails all the time. So he put in the uh, engine and the car didn't start. So he called, I don't know if he did it or someone else did it, wired in. I know Chrysler even sells it from the factory, a re an external relay into the tip them, which now runs the fuel pump instead of the tip has a relay on the board, which goes bad. So he ran, if you look here, a wire from here. Okay, this is not a good job at all. This is a really bad job. This is a terrible job. He used wire nuts. Um, okay. <laughs> right, I have to make sure you wire this incorrectly. But, I mean, he wired it enough to get it working, but I think the way Chrysler wants you to do it is to put the power here, which he did. Oh man, this whole relay box is also off. The question is, did he wire this or he just changed this relay out? That I don't know. Right, I'm going to have to look under here see what was done. But, yeah, there are wires here. <laughs> yeah, well, when you see wire connectors in the fuse box. It's not like it's an important circuit at all. It's just running the entire car. Without this, you have no fuel, but yeah, okay. Um, all right, let's see if he's protected it. All right, I didn't want to look at the other code first because I think that's the drivability issue, and then after we'll deal with this. Um, so these cars have a dual stage pump, oil pump, that has high pressure or low pressure. Now, the code. Every time I've seen it, so actually the codes are dropped different. This one's a DD, I have to look at, this one's a DA, usually I get DD. It usually just needs like an oil change or the oil filter's a little bit clogged. But I'm gonna look up this actual code. Right, they're saying, okay, keep setting. With the scan tool, actually with the oil pump solenoid, check the violet yellow wire at the oil pump solenoid pass through connector. Located on the passenger side of the engine time of the oil pan. If no battery pr voltage is present, check the violet yellow wire in cavity 8 of the C3 connector at the PCM. Or cavity 3 on the connector 2 if battery voltage is present, replace the oil pressure solenoid control wire. Okay. The oil pump is a two stage pump at engine speed less than 2800 RPM. The solenoid is activated. PCM applies battery voltage and the pump output lower. The pump outputs lower pressure. It speeds higher than 2800 RPM. The oil solenoid is deactivated and the oil pump outputs higher pressure. All right, so I think we might find the pit for this. So let me just look it up. All right, so looking at scan data, I got here, I got your oil pressure. Dual speed oil pump is off. And then it has oil pressure voltage and then oil pressure switch is false. I guess that means it's off. So now if I'm going to give RPM right now, at high RPM, it goes higher, which it's supposed to. And it goes to oil pressure, which is true. So I don't know. Everything seems to be working. I don't really see why this code is setting. It's probably not a hard code. He did replace. He told me he replaced an oil pressure switch. So let me, let me go back. Let me clear this code. And see if it doesn't come back. If it doesn't come back, I'm just gonna check the filter. Let me clear four codes. Yes. Okay, read four codes. Okay, just this guy. Perfect. So that's not a hard fault. I'm gonna tell him to put a new filter in it because I've seen many times it sets this code from from 
the filters are not installed properly. But it's definitely not a hard code because right now it's working. Let me just get those pids one more time. Graph this. Now you see we're at low pressure right now. Now I'm raising the RPM. It's at 2000 RPM and the pressure raise it goes higher. It's working as it should. And now, why does it say pump off? I guess all the pressure switch only goes on once it's on high pressure. Because right now it's at high pressure and it goes to true. I don't know why the dual speed oil pump is off. I don't know what that means. I'm going to pull this filter out quickly, just look at it. Make sure everything looks fine because right now everything's fine. Let me just look at this reflow codes. I want to make sure that code didn't come back. Oh, the, the code came back. Engine oil pressure control circuit. Hmm. But it's working. What am I missing? Right, let me go look up this code. The actual code. The dual stage engine oil pump uses veins that are moving elements controlled by a sound that produces oil pressure to the engine in two regulated pressure stages, low and high. In low pressure mode, the oil pressure will increase naturally with engine speed. With the high pressure mode, the oil pressure is increased and is fairly steady. The oil pump cylinder method on the pump is used to vary the displacement of the oil pump. The factory control module controls the solenoid operation when the solenoid is energized. A bypass oil circuit is the change of eccentricity of the mechanical pump. The minimum engine oil pressure is 11.6 psi. Anything less than this pressure, fine, that we know. All right, idle solenoid should be 11 to 23 RPM. That's solenoid on. And then 1,000 should be 16 to 29 psi. And then in high mode, okay, so it is stuck. There we go, because right now, we're at idle, 750. Read data stream. I don't know why RPM, they put to degrees a minute. It is the most annoying thing that it defaults there, and I have to switch it every single time. I put PSI in it. Okay, now graph this. So we're at 33 PSI, and we're at 600 RPM. So, we should be 11 to 23 PSI. The oil pressure is too high. So that's our problem. And right now the solenoid should be on. All right, so we have to test the solenoid. Okay, great. So component, all right. All right, so let me go check the solenoid. Let me go find it, where is it? I saw an identifier, I saw someone was saying it's by the tensioner. Oil. Oil pump solenoid. Alright, here's this connector. Now, where is that? Yeah, that could be right by the tensioner. Alright, let me go look for it under the hood. Because right now we're at 33 psi. So I think he replaced this this um, pressure switch, whatever. I don't have to switch the transistor, I don't know. Alright, let me look for this. Let me shut the car so we don't melt. Okay, so it should be somewhere down there. That definitely looks like it's going to be a real pain in the neck to get to. Alright, I got the car in a lift. Now, if you look, right on top. Hold on, I gotta get someone to point with. Right on top of the axle. This is the hardest. This is the connector for that solenoid. Now, he told me he actually did fix the wires to this when he put the engine in. So, we're going to try to find where he did that. But for now, I want to just see. I want to check for ground on this black wire. See if we have good ground. And then I'm going to bi directionally control it and see if we get power in the other one. If I can get it from down here. I don't know if I'm going to get a probe in here. Oh, yeah, that's the issue. That wire came right out really easily. See that? That wire, I gave a little tug, and it shot straight out. I don't know if I'm going to get good. See this yellow wire right here? It came right out of the connector. All right, the shot pulled out the axle, so now we have access to the wiring. So you can see now, you probably can see better. 
that this is the wire. It was really cracked in the the connector. It, it pulled it out. It didn't pull the whole connector out. It just pulled the top part of the wire ripped. So, all right. I, what I did was I took it from the old engine, the connector. I fixed it up with some electric tape and heat shrink to add wires to it so it'll be easier to solder. And I'm going to put it in right here. And we'll wire it to this. And then I'll try to... And then I'll just test it down here. And either it fixed our whole problem or another issue. I got here, this is my power probe adapter that is connected to the battery, power, and ground. If I go across these two pins, I have a test light here. It's a 3157 bulb. It's funny, it's Chrysler in service permission. They say to test the ground, they say use a load, and they actually show a picture of a 3157 bulb. Huh. All right, so now, if we get power and ground, this thing lights up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold this to power I'm first just testing the ground circuit on, I'm testing the ground circuit on that wire. Alright, so I have it disconnected here. Now, I don't know if you can see anything, but this one, the bottom one, is the ground one. And we have a good ground. Okay, now... I'm going to put this to power, I mean to ground, and I'm going to actuate it in the computer, and this, this thing should light up. All right, I'm going to go to open all the way, and it doesn't light up. All right, so I ended up just unplugging the whole harness, bringing it up, added some wire, and soldered it in. So now I'm just gonna test it. So let me get my test light. All right, I got my thing here with my stand tool. And I'm just gonna go across power and ground. Now if it works, it should light up. All right, and I'm gonna push the keys on. I'm just gonna push open. And it says, open over here, and it lights up. All right, so now this is fixed. Okay, I'm just going to get this tucked back in and plug away. Oh, it's tied away. Okay, let's close this. All right, I'm going to get this plugged back in. And now, I just want to go back to the other code that we can't get rid of. And that's for the fuel pump, which I think I figured it out because I was under the car. And I heard the fuel pump on the whole time. That means, this is the story with this part. I misunderstood. What happened was they put the engine in, and it didn't start. Now, all this wiring was here already, but it wasn't fully connected. So some guy came down and was here helping with the engine, and he just connected a wire, and then everything started working the whole time. I'm assuming he wired the tip to constantly be on every time the ignition's on. So we're going to have to fix that if we want that code to go away. Um... Engine controls. Okay, good. Now, let's find this fuel pump. Why can't I find the fuel pump? Oh, here, fuel pump module. So here is the motor feed. And that comes from this fuse. Well, okay, it comes from the actual tip pump. And when the relay closed, ah, so here, fuel pump control comes from here. And I guess it gets ground, I guess it gets ground from here and power from M37. Which is hot with run start. The car's on now? Alright, so now we're going to check M37. M30. 
M37, to the top of a four. All right, so this guy right here, it's a 10 amp. All right, so this fuse is good. So this feeds the load side of the relay, which we can't check because it's part of the board. And we can check the wires, but we're not gonna do that right now. And then it gets grounded from fuel pump control from the PCM. And then when it connects, it gives power to fuse M25 right here, which has no power. That's why, because the relay is not clicking on, fine. So this tip was bad. So somebody wired it and something must've went wrong here so that it, he must've corrected it in the wrong way. So let's see, I have to see what he did from under, underneath there. Okay. All right, now. So let me see what's happening here. This green wire is coming from, oh, uh, this blue wire blue and red you are supposed to snip wires when you do this repair all right we want the the brown wire there should be a brown wire on connector my thing's gonna die in a second i threw another battery my um the brown wire over here should be feeding the ground side okay this i think this is absolutely nothing to do with anything See, here's constant power. We, the constant power is right. We want constant power, and then we want this goes to the fuel pump. Now, is this the fuel pump, the blue and the pink? Which one goes to the actual fuel pump? Dark blue and orange. Yeah, okay. So this is wired right. The yellow, the, yellow this, green. yeah, the yellow and green's wired right. Now, we want, instead of what he did, is he grounded the, All right, so pretty much I just undid this. Um, the, it was an extra ground to add it over here. I think because, I don't know why, but it was constantly ground. So let's unground it. I mean, I pulled it out, it was in, outside the connector. I'm gonna tell the shop to fix this up. This is like completely unacceptable to use wire nuts, but that's besides the point. Um, or maybe I'll fix it up when I'm done. All right, but here, you, you turn the, the key on, just, just the key on, I wanna make sure the relay clicks. All right, it clicked. All right, now start the car. All right, there we go, leave it, leave it running. I just want to see now if the code's still there. Did you plug in that sensor? The oil sensor? Yeah. Okay, it's not plugged in, but, um, so that's, that code's still gonna be there. I just want to see the fuel pump code, because that I couldn't even clear at all. Um, intake's unplugged and engine oil pressure is unplugged. Okay, great. All right, so I got the car put back together. I fixed these wires over here. I soldered them instead of these connectors. The wire I fixed up, put plugged it in. All right, now I'm gonna clear all the codes, or let's see if the codes need to be cleared. But, all right, the car's running. Let's reconnect. I actually turned the car off and put just the key on. I'm gonna clear the codes. We'll see if they come back. Okay, no fault code started up. Engine lights off. All right, engine lights off. Let's read the codes. We have no codes. All right, that's a fix. Thanks for watching.